Hey guys, what's going on? Carl here back with another episode and finally getting to my major upgrades of 2018. I have finally bought a new camera, two of them actually. It's the new A7R3, the best mirrorless cams that you can grab this year. They're awesome. So before we get into that, there are some giveaway updates that I wanted to get around to finally. We've got some winners from the Christmas holiday pack unboxing. Congrats, I announced that over on Twitter. And there's actually still an extra Google Home from that unboxing as one of the winners never got back to me. So I will give this away on this video. So just leave a comment, whether it's on the R3, on the Google Home, or if you're just here to say what's up to me. I'll respond also and I will announce that winner quite soon, so best of luck. All right, mirrorless cam time. I've had the A7R2 for two years and it's been my go-to camera. I've used it on every single one of these videos that you've watched. I've carried this guy around and taken countless photos. It has been my beast, my go-to, and probably the best investment that I've ever made as it's allowed me to create this very YouTube channel. And when the R3s just came out at the end of last year, I knew that I had to jump on the train and I bought two of them. This guy, as well as the guy that I am currently recording with right now. So if you're just glancing at both of these, they look very similar and that's kind of true. The body hasn't really changed. The R3 is slightly, slightly longer. It's a bit thicker and that's because it has a better battery, which is my number one complaint on this guy. I have gone through countless batteries. I usually have five to six of these guys fully charged as say when I'm recording here in the studio, they won't last over 45 minutes. And that was the biggest complaint. We finally have a bigger battery on the R3 found in the A9 and they have definitely lasted longer. Every time that I've gone out and shot with this guy when I'm on the street, I have easily lasted the entire day. And that is something that I could never say about the Mark II. We have a new location for the video record button. Some of the custom buttons have been changed and we finally have a focus knob, which you can dial in focus, which is such a handy feature when you're out shooting. And that kind of leads into the third point, which is autofocus, which is once again being improved on the R3. So don't get me wrong, the R2's autofocus was good, but it wasn't perfect. There were a lot of times when I was hunting for focus. As a person that's a one-man crew, there's no one sitting behind the camera right now. I definitely rely on autofocus, especially for YouTube. When I'm vlogging, I have this guy on a little rig. I need it to focus on my face. And I found that sometimes this is where the R2 has failed. And even in the short time that I've used the R3, the autofocus has been on point. And I know pure videographers out there will swear by manual focus, but autofocus is a thing, it's important, and it's better on this year's model. The electronic viewfinder has been improved. It's brighter. It's something that's come down from the A9. And one little thing, if you guys end up grabbing this camera, I found that on the R2, R2, I didn't put a screen protector on it. And since I'm always traveling with this guy, the coating has kind of rubbed off and has made it look quite ugly. So the first thing that I did on my R3s was got a glass screen protector, should help protect and make it look nice and fresh. Even though we have the same 42 megapixel sensor inside, there are some changes that make the overall quality better. I find that Sony tweaked everything wrong with the R2, and don't get me wrong, it was still a good cam, but they made things perfect for the R3, which should make it the perfect camera for most people out there. It's a camera that does everything, and it does everything so well, and that's both in photo and video. If you need a hybrid that handles both, this is the guy to go to, and I think it's the perfect tool for any content creator, for anyone that's just looking to get the perfect all-in-one camera. The video on it, which is usually my go-to as I produce all of my YouTube content on it, it shoots in 4K, max at 30 FPS, it hasn't made it over to 60, 120 FPS slow-mo, but when we're switching over to photo, that high megapixel count sensor, that's where this thing shines also, and I've been taking way more Instapix, and a lot of you always ask, on Instagram what camera you use, it's essentially this combo right here. The R3 with the baddest 85mm 1.8. I'd say 90% of my photos over on Instagram are with this guy. I love it. 
And another big question is why I didn't wait for the A7S 3 and that's kind of the same why I didn't go for the S2. I prefer having the versatility of having a stills cam as well as one that's good for video. I'm in a well-lit studio. I don't really use too much low light stuff. And the third is the 35 mil crop, which essentially gives you two focal ranges. I usually go for primes on my cameras and I find having that extra one and a half times versatility. And I don't think waiting for the S3 with the lower megapixel count body would really have made sense for me and for what I do here on YouTube. And yeah, I think that's why the R3 is the best mirrorless cam that you can grab in 2018. I have absolutely loved both of mine so far. It can shoot 10 frames per second. The five axis image stabilization has also been slightly improved, which makes all of your handheld shots even smoother. The autofocus is bang on and it fits perfectly into one hand. And that's the biggest thing for me for a cam that I travel everywhere with. It needs to be portable. I promised myself if it didn't fit in one hand, I would never get a red camera. I would never get a 1DX Mark II. Those are too bulky. The versatility, the portability of these guys is what made me fall in love with these and I can't recommend these enough and this is in no way sponsored by Sony. They should though, considering how much money I've dropped on these cameras. I will of course leave everything mentioned in this video listed down below and maybe the last lens that we have is the 16 to 35 f4 and maybe my next purchase is the 16 to 35 g master 2.8 and that should wrap up my gear upgrades for the next couple of years i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it somewhat useful if you have any other questions i will of course try to answer them down below in the comments and i will catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes or vlogs Peace.